uh, I'll give a brief introduction. Uh, I am one of the co-promoters of Aria.ag. We are the largest integrated post-harvest grain platform and the only profitable platform. Uh, and then I'll request the panelists to give a brief about them and the organization before you know we start up with the challenge which we have hand. So we have two challenges in hand. One is to take the ambiguity out of TAM and second to keep the participants awake because after this lunch and the ambience they may fall asleep. Thank you. Uh, I run Park Plus. Uh, at Park Plus we are trying to build super app for car owners. So ca everything around your car starting with uh, standard stuff which is around parking, access control, chalan, car wash in the morning, servicing, insurance, car buying and selling, fast tag, etc. Everything happens on Park Plus. Would have roughly about uh, a crore car owners on the Park Plus platform, which means roughly every fourth car owner in India is today now on Park Plus. Uh, that's where we are right now. Hi, uh, I'm the founder and CEO of uh, Aurum Wisex. Uh, Aurum Wisex is the leading alternate investment platform uh, in India, wherein investors can access curated selection of uh, investment opportunities. So we launch opportunities in various kinds of formats, all the way from fractional ownership in real estate uh, to structured credit. Um, but all of these are primarily in the alternative segment. So trying to democratize. Uh, you know, traditional investments which have only been accessible to institutional investors to a much larger investor base. Hi, I'm Vikas Lachpani. I'm the co-founder of Pep Technologies, and I think more uh, commonly you would have seen M Caffeine. That's our, that's our brand, and we also happen to have launched a second brand called Hyphen, which just got launched two weeks back. But I just hope and pray that there would be at least one person who has used M Caffeine over here in the hall. And so we are in a rather simple business into personal care. That's about it. Yeah, hi, I'm Akhil. I'm the founder and head of research and development for Technotrion Intellectual Ventures. Uh, it's an innovation firm which specializes in building products which are inventions. We have been doing this for almost a decade now and we hold patents uh, in over 14 different sectors. Thank you. Thank you, Akhil. So coming on to TAM, what is TAM? So I'll start with some basic stuff and leave the more scientific and detailed stuff from my fellow panelists who are much more uh, you know, talented on this aspect. Uh, TAM basically uh, is a fundamental matrix which you use for evaluating the size and the growth of a business. Now, uh, it, it's a tool which is becoming very imperative for which will help you for decision making, planning your, your resources, it has relevance from two aspects, one from a promoter's aspect as well as from an investor's aspect. From a promoter's aspect, it helps them to uh, prioritize their product launch, say what segments they want to address first, and also pl plan their viable business opportunities. Uh, it also gives them a tool to forecast their business planning, and more importantly, the resources which have to be deployed to achieve those targeted segment or targeted numbers. It also, and more importantly, it helps them to showcase the growth potential to the stakeholders, mostly the investors, as to what is the potential for the business which they are doing. From an investor's perspective, it is basically helps them to understand the revenue generation model, the total market size which is available, uh, or, or the potential of a product or a service, viabilities, it also gives them an understanding on the scalability of the product or the service, which further translates or helps them to calibrate the return on investment. With this, I move to Amit. Uh, you know, Amit, most of the time the startups face a challenge in terms of the cash burns and the future addressable market which is available. And it's a very delicate balance which has to be done. What, uh, according to you, are the strategies which the founders can use to strike this? delicate balance? Uh, I think a couple of things uh, which is important while looking at the TAM part. One is uh, how many of the consumers of your survey, of the, how many consumers actually face the same problem today itself and are using some or the other solution to solve it. Which would mean then you are just building a ecosystem to just make these consumers switch from their existing solutions to a new solution. 
So the customers already know what is the problem. Customers are already using a solution. The solution might not be perfect, might be broken. So it becomes easier. Uh, the second part is uh, how many new customers you would expect uh, to uh, figure out that there is a problem and then things will work out for them. Uh, my belief system, whatever I've learned over a period of last uh, 10, 12 years in Indian internet space is uh, focusing on the customers in the first segment, which already are buying and selling. Like for example, when we talk about the car usage, there are already four crore guys, car owners, uh, who are spending close to about 2 lakh rupees per annum on their cars through things like fuel, servicing, chalans, car wash. In fact, most of you sitting here would have chalans of 5,000 rupees plus on your cars. Like you may know, you may not know. Uh, but uh, if you go and figure out, like all of you would have chalans of 5,000. Uh, so people are already spending, people are already paying. Uh, similarly, when you look at the examples of like things like PTM, etc., I built the whole payment business at PTM. Again, people were already paying. They were paying in cash, but people were already paying. Uh, that is still relatively easier to convert, but if you look at uh, would new people come into that segment, who would start paying, would new people, that is very hard. India's per, at least at an India level, India's per capita income, uh, like, uh, uh, in 2015 was about $1,500, $1,600. Right now it is about $2,400. It is not growing at the pace at it should be growing. So while GDP overall has been increasing, but, but the per capita or ability to spend is not growing. So if you are in a business which requires capital, external capital, etc., uh, you just can't bank on the fact that the new consumers will come up, their spending power will increase, they'll spend more with you, etc. That's not going to happen uh, over a period of five, seven years. So from a TAM point of view, the most important TAM to focus on is the consumers who are already using that service one way or the other. No, very valuable point, Amit, that instead of focusing on what might come, the focus ideally has to be what is there and what are the consumers using it. So with this, uh, you know, there are various methodologies which are adopted, you know, top-down approach, bottom-up value theories in order to assess the uh, market or the potential of the untapped markets and the customer base. So with this, I move to Aryaman, you know, what are the other methodologies which the people can adopt, you know, to ha or different approaches which the founders can, uh, you know, rely on to get a much more accurate assessment of the time. You know? Sure, so, um, you know, there are multiple variations of TAM as well. There's SAM, SOM, you know, a lot of three letter abbreviated words uh, via which you can measure the market, but I think the intent is pretty simple to understand if you're solving a problem statement which is large enough, right? It, you should not have a problem in terms of demand, and that's the essence of trying to quantify a market. But where these things tend to sort of not be helpful is when you uh, use a very macro uh, funnel to sort of define what TAM is for you. So I'll give a very simple example. You know, we are in the investments business. Now, I could say theoretically, uh, the TAM for my business is all of India with all its money in it because technically everyone can invest, uh, you know, on an investment platform. But again, that's not the right implication or that's not the reality behind the market that I am sort of going after. You know, I might be going after a more niche segment. I might be going after people who are, you know, above a net worth of a certain threshold so that they can invest into alternative products. So sort of defining that TAM becomes very, very pertinent and truly becomes the uh, you know, target of the company. The second part to the TAM story is that I believe the TAM also evolves over time, right? So a lot of businesses that do zero to one or that are in their inception stage have to be a little bit flexible with respect to what TAM means for them. I mean, today, you know, you might start off as an investment platform. Tomorrow, you might augment it with your own payment gateway. So, you know, the TAM will keep evolving, it'll keep changing. And quite often, uh, you know, getting lost in TAM is not... Uh, uh, something which, you know, ends up being fruitful for the company in itself. So whilst, yes, TAM is important, but the way to calculate it is really based on true reality on what you're trying to go after, not really what the theoretical, um, you know, size of the market may be. No, very well, Aryaman. So what essentially Aryaman is saying that uh, there are three things which are important for a business to run. One is a product, the second is a team, and third is a market. Product and team are in your control, market is not. So you have to stay agile, you have to stay flexible, and uh, uh, for a very, uh, for a successful business, 
it is important that you identify the customer need. That, and then probably you can add those value propositions to assess the time per, per se. So with this, uh, you know, we move to Vikas, who has set up a personal brand with M Caffeine. Uh, Vikas, uh, how has your experience been, you know, in setting up a personal prayer brand, and uh, how do you, you know, draw a line in, in, in terms of not overestimating the time and slightly being more realistic about it? So this is an interesting question, and you know, so let's understand the question, right? How do we not overestimate the time? So here there is a fundamental assumption that time are meant to be overestimated. Right. right. Now, I'll give you the brand side of the story. So, brands fundamentally, you know, live in a paradox, right? The paradox is this. On one end, you want the TAM to be as big as possible, right? Which I think is a fundamental question that we are starting out with. Second thing is, you want the brand to be as differentiated as possible. Now, these two things are absolutely contradicted to each other, right? If you want the biggest TAM, then you make a brand which is for everybody doing everything and, you know, uh, but anything which is for everybody is practically for nobody from a brand side of the world. So you want the brand to be very precise and very differentiated. So this is one question that you deliberate with on a daily basis, rather, you know, more than once a day, that when is it that you are expanding the time or when you are actually diluting the brand, right? So when you make a brand, the brand, again, you know, there are multiple parts as we were talking about to a company. Similarly, for a brand, part of it is the consumer, Right? But you have to pick the consumer that you're targeting, right? So that when you talk about time, you know, the, the target market, so you need to define the target very carefully. You simply can't say that, you know, anybody who can, you know, who gets into a shower will be a customer per se, because that's when, you know, before your, you know, shampoo, your brand gets diluted, right? So this question, you know, becomes uh, very, very relevant for brands overall, because, you know, fundamentally the best brands have been, which are very, very specific. So in this question, one part is basically the size of the market, second part is differentiation. I think the thing that bridges the two is relevance. So we need to be absolutely relevant to the audience that we are, you know, assuming as the, as the, as the target audience per se. And that's where we can, you know, and then we have the remaining, what you call 999 problems to solve still. Because we have just defined the brand, we still got to build a company and build a brand around it and stuff, right? But that's the brand side of the, the story to this. You know, very, very valuable point because uh, I have come across a lot of, you know, founders talking about when they want to assess the time, they will say, we believe in, that's what my gut says. Now, be, uh, trust me, nobody cares what you believe in or what your gut says. It will all boil down to numbers and numbers have to speak for itself. So who better than, you know, giving your direction on the numbers than the research? So uh, over to Akhil, you know, uh, what is the relevance of those research reports which you basically doing and how does those reports and uh, consultancy assignments help the founders to assess the actual time as Vikas was mentioning you know uh, in, uh, you build a brand so you have to be more specific rather than you know uh, yeah. more generic yeah thank you <clears throat> i'll take it from the non brand perspective i'll take it from the perspective of what is the overall actionable that you have to do when you're trying to come up with your own startup, right? Defining the TAM is very, very hard to do, especially in the initial years or in the initial time period because you do not know what you're trying to build, right? It is a work in progress even at that time. <clears throat> so what did we do in Technotrion? We focused on something called Integrated Industry Research Report. That is something that uh, we came up with a couple of years back. And we came up with it specifically for upcoming startups, the new startups, the seed round startups, and below them. And what that essentially had was all of the data that the patents had to offer from the history of that industry. Anything and everything that you're building today, anything and everything that you have in your hand that you're utilizing, the history lies in the patents. If, you, if there's a certain technology that is in your hand, in your phone today, right now, the patents were not done today. The patents were done quite a long time back so that you can have that technology in your hand. And patents are an everlasting record of the technologies that exist 
because there is no change in those documentations once done. So once you are able to go back into the history of your industry, into the history of your own product, you are able to understand the trends that emerge from it. And the market size correlating to the overall sales of that time period allow us to define what are the market trends for a certain thing. On top of it, there are platforms that exist that give you the overall landscape at a global level as to what technologies are developed where, by who, when, and what are the overall trends. So one technology, one particular platform is called Lens.org. So I also request the panel members, uh, for those of you who are not familiar with this platform, to just go and search for your keywords of the product offerings that you have on this particular platform. And you'll get a global idea as to who is developing these particular search results, in what area, at what time, and what all bigger companies are interested in the development of the set technologies. Thank you, Akhil. Uh, research and the trends are something which we cannot run away with. They will remain as they are, and they are quite ineffective tools in uh, paving the path which an organization will want to take. Now, coming to Amit, Amit, you have seen Series C funding in your organization. Apart from TAM, uh, what are other factors, you know, which help you to decide that time has come for us to, you know, raise funds and use effectively? Because we have seen a lot of startups and organizations, they, they've taken too much money, which added to a lot of inefficiency within the organization. And when the funding winter came in, they're all struggling. So what is, is an advice from you or, or the factors which people should consider before going in for a fundraise? Uh, so Park Plus was obviously my fourth venture. Like before that, I've been part of uh, 300 ventures earlier, Make My Trip, Paytm, and Tokopedia. And have seen all these organizations raise a large amount of capital before going public. Uh, so one thing I think which I've been very, very clear about the Indian market is that Indian market, like if you look at the listed market, Apart from the top 15, top 25, top 30 companies, which are the banks or Reliance, etc., kind of companies, like if you make like a few hundred crores of PAT, you would be among the top 100 companies of India. So, which means the Indian market fundamentally, it's not a very sizable market. Like if you have a 500, 700 crore annual revenue, you have a 100, 150 crore PAT kind of a company, you will be among the top 500 companies of the country. And that company would be valued at 2,000 crore, 3,000 crore, 5,000 crore in the public markets. So which again means that if you are a company which is in the private markets getting valued at 10,000 crore, 15,000 crore, or like higher what we saw in last two years, that is not going to sustain when you go public. Market in India is small. At GDP level, we are very big. But at a company level, at an individual level, market is small. So you don't have a choice but to build a business which is very, very, which has to be very frugal in nature. Uh, and you have to focus on the revenue. Like if you look at all the companies that got listed, like while now everybody is turning profitable, but roughly everybody of them is like one third of what they were being valued at in their peak private market. So for these companies even to reach their private market value, which was three years, five years back, it'll take another three years. India, so like I think it has to be very clear that uh, uh, India is a market which is uh, at a co each company level, uh, it is very hard to build. And if you look at like, the same companies, like for example, HDFC would have a bank also and a insurance also and a securities also. Like the brand trust, look at Tata, same group building more and more this thing. So it is just important to understand that uh, market is not very big, carry away not need to carry away. Uh, frugal banana is necessary because finally things will catch up. Like if you look at like most of the startups, like if you are having so many, like ITC, companies like ITC, HLL would have only 100, 200 crore people, 100, 200 people with a crore salary. If you look at most of the startups which have raised 100 million, they would have 50 people with more than a crore salary. If you have ITC or HLL crore salary, you can make so much money, then why are you giving it to you? There is no market, there is no market. So, वो जिंदगी की सच्चाई है मतलब इंडिया की और वो चेंज नहीं होने वाली अगले पांच साल में भी 
तो व्हेन यू रेज कैपिटल एंड कैपिटल इज नॉट कमिंग फॉर फ्री लाइक एज अ फाउंडर यू आर गिविंग योर शेयर ऑफ इक्विटी मतलब लाइक वो फ्री पैसा नहीं है लगता है कि डेट नहीं है तो इसलिए फ्री पैसा है बट इट इज़ नॉट द फ्री मनी यू आर गिविंग योर इक्विटी यू आर गिविंग योर शेयर इन द बिजनेस आप अपने दस साल लगा रहे हो उसको बिजनेस को बनाने में उस दस साल बाद वो आपको नहीं पता बिजनेस बनेगा नहीं बनेगा आपके लिए लाइफ में वो एक शॉट है एक शॉट खराब हो गया दस साल खत्म आपने फैमिली पे सेक्रीफाइस किया आपने पर्सनल लाइफ पे सेक्रीफाइस किया आपने हेल्थ पे सेक्रीफाइस किया सब कुछ किया दस साल बाद अगर आप फेलियर हो तो कोई गिनने वाला नहीं है आपको सो दैट इज द ट्रूथ ऑफ लाइफ सो वेन यू फोकस योर एनर्जीज योर थाट प्रोसेस विद दैट क्लैरिटी यार आई हैव वन शॉट आई हैव टू मेक इट सक्सेसफुल एंड वेन इट बिकम सक्सेसफुल आई डोंट वॉन्ट टू बी अ टू परसेंट फोर परसेंट फाउंडर मतलब वो दो टके का फाउंडर चार टके का फाउंडर क्या फाउंडर होता है यार लाइक सो वेन यू वॉन्ट टू बी एट अ सर्टन स्केल यू वॉन्ट टू हैव अ सर्टन परसेंटेज इन द कंपनी यू वॉन्ट टू मेक श्योर थिंग्स आर वर्किंग फॉर यू दिस इज वेरी हार्ड टू पुल ऑफ बट वो फिर रेवेन्यू फोकस रहना पड़ेगा प्रोगैलिटी रहनी पड़ेगी हर ऑग में एक्सपेरिमेंट्स लिमिटेड करने पड़ेंगे सैलरीज लिमिट करनी पड़ेगी स्पेंड लिमिट करना पड़ेगा इफ यू डोंट डू इट लाइक फाइव ईयर्स डाउन द लाइन यूल रिकोगनाइज द मार्केट इज वेरी वेरी डिफरेंट सो दैट्स हैव बीन द फिलासफी फ्रॉम डे वन एट अ पार्कलेस लेवल very valid points amit it's always a trade off between valuation and the profitability uh, you know and and the time factor attached to it many, many a time startups uh, you know get over carried with the valuation game and uh, they race too far and they spread too thin so by the time they achieve those numbers their ownership is very minuscule so people end up asking what did it why did it do this you know very valid point so with this uh, uh, i move to Ariman Ariman when you started this fractional ownership investment platform uh, it was a pretty new industry by that time so how did you go about you know assessing the potential in the market sure so um, you know when we started off we didn't look at it so much from a directly tam perspective it was a bit more organic than that so the the, the problem statement was very simple uh you know indians love rental income uh, indians love real estate as a you know as a, a country we love real estate but the kind of access that people had was very limited the kind of experience people had was terrible you know the number of people who would have said that you know we burnt our hands while trying to invest in real estate would be far more than uh, the number of people who would say that about any other asset class so the problem statement was very straightforward as to you know how can we sort of address this issue how can we make the whole asset class something which is a little bit more uh, investor centric investor favorable and transparent um and provide them a solution to do the same so you know that's actually the intent via which we started off with and really tam followed i mean once we were able to demonstrate that we can reduce the ticket size or the quantum of funds required to invest into real estate by syndicating investors or by creating fractional ownership in properties Uh, and doing that more in an organized manner right so doing it through uh, proper securities proper structure compliance governance once you're able to demonstrate that value add your tam changes so on day one your tam was people who could buy real estate which would be you know a handful in india especially if we talk about commercial real estate not residential uh, so we also focus on commercial just for perspective but when we started there might have been maybe 100 commercial real estate investors simply because a single commercial real estate property would cost maybe 75 crores 100 crores so you know that the the uh, suppose that tam would have been very small but to address that concern we introduced fractional ownership reduced the ticket size to about 20 25 lakhs per investor so suddenly your tam also became very very large it became uh, you know a, a space which hasn't been ventured into before so we started tapping into fixed deposit investors fixed income investors and suddenly our tam grew tremendously so more than actually trying to figure out the market size we fi- we figured out a problem statement which people wanted to be addressed um, and you know we unlocked an asset class which otherwise was quite uh, antiquated uh, you know in its ability to access and invest into no very valid point arman so uh, uh, i will take this question along to vikas also because his uh, while we are talking about data being a tool to assess uh, the market potential uh, he started a different uh, product all together on the personal health care and brand a brand where a lot of you know secondary data research was not available uh, how did you go about vikas doing that you know to adjust the tam sam or the som <laughs> so it's very interesting right so one way to glean information in 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 certain sectors is when you look at 
top down and you know you look at these industry reports and 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 very valid and you know because they give you a like a perfect top view and a complete picture of the whole thing right but then you know what uh, as far as lifestyle products are concerned or lifestyle brands are concerned there's a lot of information that you can only get through people directly now understand this particular thing right so imagine if you are to make a, such a company let's say 25 years back in time right now what is it that you are trying to do you are trying to do surveys asking people about you know like how do you bathe how do you use a cream what do you use when do you use it you know who all in the family use it so basically these are all stated preferences that people tell you about i mean and obviously we all know that stated preferences and revealed preferences could be very very different right i mean i could state that my preference is a ferrari but i end up buying a nano because that's all i can afford so but then over this time period with this advent of social media right the interesting thing is people are giving you a glimpse into the bathrooms right people are telling you that this is what i use this is how i use it this is my lifestyle people are giving you a glimpse into your lifestyle right so now fundamentally the entire equation or the entire proposition on which that industry data or top level data was collected that paradigm is completely changing right so you go back to 70s and they were talking about you know what we have a cream that you can use in summers you can use it in winters you can you know use it if you are you know if you get a rash you can use it if you go to a party you can use it you know आप जल भी गए तो वो क्रीम लगा लीजिए एंड यू नो दिस इज वन क्रीम एंड नाउ देर इज दिस मार्केट वेर वी हैव अ डे क्रीम वी हैव अ नाइट क्रीम वी हैव अ फेस क्रीम वी हैव अ एल्बो क्रीम वी हैव अ बैरियर रिपेयर क्रीम वी हैव अ सीरम एंड यू नो एंड सो ऑन एंड सो फॉर दैट लिस्ट इज मच लॉन्गर नॉट बिकॉज ऑफ पीपल हैव बिकम फ्रिवलस बिकॉज द मार्केट हैज एक्सपैंडेड एंड पीपल हैव अंडरस्टूड दैट दे हैव वेरियस डिफरेंट नीड्स फॉर विच दे नीड डेडिकेटेड सोल्यूशंस नाउ इफ यू लुक एट द ओवरऑल इंडस्ट्री पिक्चर इट विल नेवर रिवील as to what this picture could be over a period of time what you need to do is you need to get into people's lifestyles people's aspirations i mean until some time back it was very prestigious to say that you know we've got something from you know so and so european country and therefore this product must be good and you know please believe us trust us because it's a foreign uh, imported stuff i mean today we are proud to say that we can do stuff in india that's a paradigm shift from the consumer side more than from the you know people who are doing the work it's from the consumer side so when when you look at it then you suddenly realize that all these typical ways of being you know tams and som they all you know they'll be inadequate right and suddenly you realize that people are going to be consuming the products very differently they are going to be consuming the products you know more or less it could be either ways right i mean uh, you know whichever way it goes but people are these days giving so much of glimpse into their lifestyle that you can start defining you know these target addressable markets through that right and i think that's the crux of all the lifestyle kind of businesses that are emerging out of uh, india now nay very true vikas so a lot of you know this social media data is also become a good tool to assess the market potential available something which uh, good to go answers are always there people will not want to open up the heart actually what they in terms of the preferences so uh, a very good you know inside on using the social media as a tool to uh, get to know the preferences of the consumers i i remember jordano when they first started their brand in singapore they went and asked everyone to open their cupboards and show them what kind of dress they have and that's when they arrived that most of the people have a black and a white combination and that's when they started with a black white combination of dresses and the greats to it so it's a very now people did it physically now they can do it sitting at home or sitting in office very good insight so akil coming to you your strength is research you know what is your experience about some of the companies uh, in terms of their dynamic and agility to handle uncertainties you know yeah thank you mr anand so the way i look at it is very differently than my panelists do just because of the kind of industry i'm involved in all right let's look at tam from the perspective of a patent some of you might be familiar with the book by hbr called blue ocean strategy i am a heartfelt believer in that book that do not fight for red oceans make blue oceans and win in them so what do patents really do right patents grant you a monopoly over the said product or idea that you have that essentially enables you to 
stop other people from competing, number one. But on top of it, it allows you to create your own segment. You know, in the first and second session today, we discussed uh, with the other panelists the, the segments which allow you to create your own niche, the products which are segment creators. So, what do patents do? And I'll take a small story which happened within this year, all right? There was a certain company which came to us and asked us for some uh, IP portfolios on smart wearables, specifically covering smart glasses. As you all already know that Google, uh, Meta, as well as Samsung, they have been working on this tech for the last one and a half decade. So clearly, the patent landscape is very, very cutthroat and very competitive. And we had initially refused to take up the project just because of the complexities involved in securing those portfolios. So what did we do? We focused on the creation of new and novel ideas in that particular segment. And it took a little while, it took us almost three months. But what we were able to do was get him a patent on a body regulating smart glasses. That opens up an entirely different avenue. You're not talking about AR, VR anymore. You're not infringing on any of the other uh, large MNC's patent rights. What you have done is opened your market up to people who would wear your glasses on the beach, who would wear your glasses when they're hiking on a hill station. They would wear your glasses for maybe treatment purposes. That is the sort of TAM that we aspire to build for every startup uh, in the organizations that we run. Because we believe that TAM is not limited by just the numbers that you see on the reports. TAM is essentially limited, just like everything, everything else, by the imagination and by the work that you put when you build your own startup. So please focus like my panelists said, do not focus on defining the TAM. Focus on expanding it and overcoming it. Thank you. No, thank you, Akhil. Uh, I think one of the cue which we can always take is from Arjun of Mahabharat, of staying focused, looking at the fish eye or the bird's eye rather than anywhere else. So.